Hi guys, Tom Hunt here in the kit room. Now, first of all, apologies. It's been three months since I uploaded a video, but not without good reason. Uh, I've got a baby boy, my firstborn son. He's about six weeks old now, uh, and I really just haven't had the time. I've been concentrating on family life, managed a little bit of fishing, but not a huge amount. But I just feel like me and my wife, we're starting to find our feet now. And um, yeah, I wanted to get back in here and start making some videos for you. Uh, what's on my mind at the moment? I've had some competitions lately, caught some amazing fish, but the pike fishing has been very, very good and I've really, really enjoyed it. But I wanted to take you through what I call my competition pike fishing setup because this is slightly different. It's more of a finesse version to what I would classically call pike fishing with lures, you know, which tends to be heavy rods, big baits, because pike are obviously the biggest predator that we've got here in UK waters. They got the biggest mouths, they're the most aggressive, you know, so we do tend to fish big baits and stuff for them. But if I'm in a tournament scenario, they all count. So I really want to put myself in with a chance of anything from two pounders up to 20 pounders. And I've spent a long time over the years finessing my kit and getting it just right. So that, yeah, I've had a number of meter plus or 20 pound plus fish in tournaments on this type of setup. But it's also absolutely brilliant for being able to get those bites off small jacks or if I just need, if, I just, if I'm looking for just one bite from a pike to, to get me that win or to get me a podium on that in that tournament, um, I would trust this kit all day long, all right? So traditional pike fishing, I would say, in the UK is going to be around the kind of 40 to 100 gram rods and they're going to be about eight foot to eight foot six somewhere in that range on these ones i come down slightly um in scandinavia i go up slightly because again they're much wilder fish probably never seen a bait before probably never seen hooks before probably haven't been caught before huge expanses of water not a huge amount of anglers here in the uk when we're fishing tournaments or if the water's pressured there's a lot of anglers on that water coming down and finessing your pike fishing a little bit can really get you an extra few bites or get you any bites on a day that maybe you might have blanked so um yeah so let me take you through my two finesse setups so this is the finessiest end of uh my pike fishing it's a westin finesse shad seven foot six so a little bit shorter than a traditional pike rod uh, and 12 to 38 grams. Now this is absolute dream to fish with all day. A 2,000 size, a 2,500 size reel, about a 20 pound braid, coming down to about a 15 to 20 pound wire trace, and then I'm generally looking the 12 centimeter shad tee. So I'll come on to that in a sec because I've got my top three baits that I'm going to take you through for finesse piking. But 12 centimeter shad tees in headlight, this one I've got on here, is my go-to. Um, so yeah, it's an absolute dream. It can cast anything, I could probably get away with casting 14 or maybe even 15 centimeters, like the hypo tees, but shad tees in deep or, or slim version, 12 centimeters, 14 centimeter slim, 15 centimeter uh, hypo tees, anything around that kind of range, I can just about get away with on this, all right? But this rod is perfect for the 12 centimeter shad tees. Uh, however, it's not the strongest rod in the world when we're thinking about pike fishing. So be aware that you don't want to oversize and use super heavy gauged wire hooks, you know, traditional big trebles or traditional big heavy thick wire hooks on your jig heads because you haven't quite got enough in this rod to be striking home those heavy wire hooks. All right, so somewhere around the medium and that's the whole point of being able to catch big fish on these baits. If you're balanced set up, so the rod is the right strength for the braid, is the right strength for the hooks, no problem getting those big fish out whatsoever. Uh, my step up from there, which would be for a little bit further casting, uh, it's actually a handmade rod. This is seven foot eight. So I've gone up another couple of inches. It's 15 to 50 grams. I could probably just about chuck 60 grams on this. But this will do me for, I can out of push fish a 16 centimeter shad tees on this. But again, 12s, 14s, 15 centimeter shad tees. But I go up slightly, 3000 size reel. So slightly quicker, slightly heavier braid, 25 
30 pound at a push, but about 25 pound is absolutely ideal. And I go up again, so I've got a 25 or a 30 pound titanium trace on this. Um, I do, however, this rod has got a little bit extra power compared to this one. So I do go up, I'm up on the, um, the West End HD jig heads on this one. So it's not the thickest wire jig head ever, but it is like, I call it a medium to a medium heavy. And again, that's absolutely perfectly balanced on that setup. What you're trying to avoid is when you're competition fishing, you're trying, to, uh, you're trying to avoid too much slack in your line. You always want to be direct, which is why you come down in that braid slightly, but you're not overpowering it with the rod. If I was to go up to 30, 40, 50 pound braid, when I'm using smaller jig heads, smaller lures, I'm gonna end up with quite big bows in the line, especially if I'm trying to distance cast, I'm gonna lose distance as well. So a 20 or a 25 pound braid, it's really gonna get me an extra five to 10 yards on each cast. And again, on these pressured waters or when you're in a tournament situation, they're not gonna crawl up the line. I'm not expecting to get a huge number of bites in the zero to 10 meters away from the boat. I'm looking to get most of my bites 30, 25 to 50 yards away. So if I've got a heavy braid that's only allowing me to cast 40 yards, then I've only got a 15 meter zone from 25 to 40 yards, um, 15 meters, 15 yard zone to try and you know get most of my bites. If I come down in braid and I've got everything absolutely balanced and I can consistently hit 50 yards say, putting another 10 yards on, but that's a very important 10 yards. That's almost doubling the, the, the zone that I'm gonna get. I'm going from 25 to 50 yards now rather than 25 to 40, all right? So uh, I've just extended my catching zone from 15 to 25 yards, you know? Uh, and I think that's a really important point. Think about those technical details. And as long as everything's balanced, like I said, I've had countless numbers of meter plus or 20 pound plus fish in tournaments on these type of setups. Absolute dream. Now I'm going to move on to the three lures that I really love for my tournament situations. My go-to is always going to be 12 centimetres deep bodied regular shad tees. Absolutely incredible lure. Um, it's just the right amount. I don't mind when I'm pike fishing, I don't mind coming down in size. So normally 16 centimetre shad tees. If I'm on a water looking for big fish, 18 centimetre bull tees. 20 centimeters, like anywhere from 16 to sort of 20, mid 20 centimeters. But you're looking for big, big fish in that instance. So when I come down, I don't mind shrinking the size of my bait, but I still want to keep it as an aggressive bait. And I've got that in all three of these lures. So um, yeah, 12 centimeter shad tees. We now do the 12 centimeter shad tees in a slim version as well. And this is amazing for just getting that last one or two bites out of an area that you might have caught a couple from. And you've just got like, they've become a little bit aware that there's boats in the area. They, they're aware that other fish might have been caught and they just start to get cagey. And you might want to come down to a 10 or a 12 centimeter slim body, a little bit smaller tail, a little bit less body roll, a little bit less aggressive in the water. And that can just get you an extra last couple of bites for a tournament, which is cracking. Um, a bait that I've really got to grips with this year has been the swim. And again, the 10 centimeter swim is a cracking competition lure for pike fishing. Um, so I've got it here in the, I think that's called the real roach or the realistic roach. Um, I've got it in a few different colors. Official roach is also great. Get a little bit more of a golden to it. But a key distinction that I wanna, wanna make with you guys is the difference between lures without orange bellies or with orange bellies, especially when you're using baits like the swim, which are gonna be, is not a deep water bait. Um, nine times out of 10, I'm fishing the sinking version, but I'm still typically not fishing more than about six, maybe eight foot deep on these baits. And I'm happy to do that even in 15 to 20 foot of water. And the reason the belly color is so important because as, as, as a general shallow bait, this is gonna be above the line of sight for those pike. They might be sitting in weeds in 12 to 15 foot deep. And I want, I wanna be casting up towards the shore, working it over that very, very shallow water. 
then maybe coming to the edge of that weed, giving it a little pause, dropping it down to six foot, but it might still be in 10 or 12 foot of water, but they're gonna be looking up at it. And sometimes an orange belly can be absolutely killer. Don't know why, especially in the spring and early summer, obviously maybe it's a color that really attracts their attention. If you think about perch, roach and rudd, they've all got red or orangey style fins. So um, yeah, those fins are gonna be pectoral fins, anal fins, tail fins, obviously on the bottom and visible to the pike if it's above them. So um, yeah, sometimes a little bit too much, especially in super clear water. Um, in super clear water, I'd go for a real realistic one like this and with uh, uh, just more of a plain kind of white belly. But if they are on it or there's a little bit of color in the water, an orange belly can be absolutely deadly. So there is a distinction. So most, most of the time, especially with the swim and with a few, I'm always thinking, Zip, no orange belly versus orange belly. That's quite a distinction in my mind. Sometimes I couldn't even actually care less about the rest. Like the bling perch, for example, has got an orange belly. Official roach has got an orange belly. Uh, Headlight hasn't. Um, some, of the other, uh, some of the other ones that are more sort of natural colored haven't. And so, yeah, I, sometimes I'm just making my decisions based on the, on the belly color rather than the actual overall lure color. This one as well is a cracking bait, especially in the spring when the when we might have quite a bit of rain still coming out the back end of winter uh, and uh, the visibility might be down to sort of one to two foot in some places. Having a really, really nice bright bait that's gonna contrast heavily. The black and the orangey red here contrast very heavily uh, and it can really, really get the eye, um, you know, really, allow those pike to find it in that slightly colored water when it's working backwards and forwards. But yeah, nine times out of 10, I'm using the sinking version, occasionally use the suspending version, but the suspending version just isn't quite as versatile. You're really fishing naught to two or three feet with that one. So up above shallow weeds can be amazing, but I find the sinking version, I can fish it two or three feet deep, a little bit quicker, and then I can also give it a little bit of a pause and just get it down to that kind of maximum six to eight foot range as well. Work them side to side. You can also work these on a straight wind as well, and they've got a great swimming action, or, or working them with the rod tip to really get those flashing, uh, you know, get the attention of those pike. But 10 centimeters, cracking, cracking lure, anything from two to 20 pounds you'll catch on like this. And my last, my last pick, especially coming into the warmer weather, is gonna be the bass bite, okay? So it's a small lure, but it packs a lot of punch. It's a very wide lure, comes in two sizes, the six centimeter and the seven centimeter. But again, it's, um, it's, it's a square bill, um, so it, it's got quite a nice wide wobble. It's displacing some water. So pike are always gonna be aggressive. So even if I'm coming down the layers and finessing, I still want enough vibrations in the area to try and draw a fish. You know, hopefully they'll come in and it, and it just looks like a small snack for them. All right, even a, a two, a five, a 10 pounder is happy. If the water's pressured, they'll be happy to come up and have a little snack on these types of baits at times when they wouldn't come up and take big baits because it's just a little bit too much. They're a little bit too wary. They might have been caught previously. There's a lot of boat activity in the area. They just won't come up on those big baits uh, as aggressively as they will on a small bait. But I do like a bait that's gonna be, you know, having a bit of punch to it. So yeah, I do like this color as well. Classic fire tiger, orange belly. But if you're gonna fish this and you've got more than about two feet of visibility, um, these do fish it with a bit of pace. You have to, if you're gonna fish Larry colors in water that's got a little bit of clarity to it, you have to have a Larry color and pace. If you fish Larry color slow, they'll hear it, they'll see it, they'll come up to it, and then they'll just think it's not natural enough. But you will instigate those reaction strikes from, from horrible, big, ugly colors, you know, um, that don't look natural, but you have to have a bit of pace onto those lures. And these are great baits, you get a lot of vibrations and a lot of feedback through the rod, and they're really, really good baits to fish, especially when the water's warm. 
So that's my top three tips. And the last thing that I kind of want to finish on is really, you know, spring and summertime, more towards summer when the water temperature gets up. People talk about, do you pike fish through the summer? When do you stop? When do you start again? All of that sort of stuff. So just as a rule of thumb, guys, if I'm out on a boat, I've got um, obviously my transducer, my helix, uh, hummingbird helix in the water, and I can, I can take a good, accurate water gauge. I'm taking a surface temperature water gauge, um, if I'm if I'm bank fishing, I've actually got a small mobile one that I can just drop in. It's got a little um, a sensor on it on a meter long uh, uh, wire, and it's literally the size of like a two pound coin. It's a tiny little thing, and I can plop it over the edge and just get a bit of a reading. So generally, my cutoff is going to be about. 16 to 18 degrees but it depends on the type of water if you're on a big body of water that's consistently got a lot of wind that's that's fairly sort of shallow and i don't mean like three foot shallow i mean shallow where there's enough vegetation but there's some deeper areas to it i'm happy to go up to about 18 degrees i know the pike anglers club the pac here in the uk recommend anything up to about 20 degrees and after that the hotter the water the less dissolved oxygen you're going to have as a maximum. Um, so any type of small pond that is very shallow can heat up very, very quickly um, and might have trees around it. So it's got a lot of veg dead vegetation that goes in that the bacteria that break that down can often suck the oxygen out of it. They might be liable to um, algae blooms, that type of stuff and areas that might, small ponds that don't get much wind on them. They're going to be the highest risk waters for warm water piking. All right. So definitely avoid those in the summer. But if you're fishing deeper locks, um, or places that have got a mixture of vegetation and then deeper areas. They get wind on them, they're large. Uh, I don't have a problem going up to about 18 degrees on those, uh, but make sure you've got everything slick as a whistle. You catch that pike, you're not spending too long. Um, like they obviously fight, but you can get them in the net, even on these balance setups relatively quickly. Get them in the net, unhook them. If you want a quick photo, make it quick. But I always aim for two minutes as a once I've lifted that net over the side of the boat, two minute within two minutes, I want that that fish back in the water. And it's just speed. Just get them back in the water, let them recover quickly. And then the quicker you can just let them go with a powerful, they can go and sit down at depth where it's a little bit cooler. They can catch their breath again and you shouldn't have any mortalities. All right. So keep an eye on that. Um, keep an eye on blue green algae um, and yeah, a any of those places that don't get a huge amount of wind, which is going to increase surface area and increase uh, oxygen on the surface and dissolved oxygen. All right. So there's a few tips for kind of summer piking. But um, yeah. There we go, guys. That's my sort of tournament competition setup. One big shout out to my uh, regular boat partner, Kev Cox. He's also made a video on this with his sponsor, Fox. I think it's on YouTube somewhere. They're on the bank. They're on a gravel pit. And he takes you through his finesse fishing pike setup, similar to mine. And we've spent a lot, quite a lot of time over the years, uh, you know, trying to perfect getting it just finessey enough but just balanced enough and just strong enough and this for me is absolutely you know i've got super confidence in catching had a 25 pound pike 110 centimeters uh, and i've had it on the lighter of these two setups recently so you can get those big fish in no probs as long as it's all balanced but there you go guys my top three tips um my setups my top three baits and i uh, hope you enjoyed it any comments stick it in the um comments below any questions etc etc but i'm back i'll be doing some more youtube videos hope you enjoyed it press the like press subscribe and see you on the next one cheers